All right, guys, welcome back. This is match hat number 60, covering one of the best strategy games of all time, Julian Gollop's XCOM UFO Defense. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if aliens from outer space were to land on this planet and start kicking ass? I've got to tell you, friends, that would be a bad situation. Because even if they, if all they had was the technology to get here, that means they would be so much more exponentially orders of magnitude more advanced than us, technologically speaking. It would be like an ant attacking a lawnmower or Arnold J. Rimmer confronting an astrophysics exam. This would be bad. And I think the game XCOM, UFO Defense, also known as UFO, Enemy Unknown, paints a pretty vivid picture. Makes it pretty clear just the, the scope of this challenge Earth would be up against. Now this is a turn-based, a tactical strategy game, a war game, if you will. It was extremely popular, hundreds of thousands, something like 600,000 units sold just for the PC. A very addictive, but it's a game a lot of people may not be familiar with if they got into uh, PC gaming rather late in the game. Now it was uh, designed by a British programmer named Julian Gollop. And this was a fellow who had programmed uh, plenty of earlier strategy games, uh, mostly for British computers. A couple we should talk about, of course, a 1986 game called Rebel Star that was published for the ZX Spectrum and a few other platforms. And this game, we already see a lot of the strategic elements that would show up in the later games. Uh, but one limitation was this was a two-player only game. Uh, so there was no computer-controlled uh, opponents, no scenarios, that kind of thing. Now that was made up for in a 1988 game called Laser Squad, which was even more popular uh, than Rebel Star had been. Uh, this game was uh, ported to all sorts of platforms, including the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. And it's, a, it's a great game. It was a very successful game. And uh, really, when uh, Julian was designing a sequel to this, uh, that sequel is what ended up becoming XCOM. A little interesting factoid there for you. It's a, a really a, a brilliant game. It's, it's very, very difficult, but I think you'll agree it's worth uh, the <laughs> time it will take uh, to uh, master this learning curve. So without further ado, here is XCOM. Now the first decision you need to make here is what difficulty level. And I would strongly suggest beginner unless you have played this before or you are ready for a royal butt kicking. Uh, the next thing is where to put your base. Now the manual and a few of the sites I looked at suggested either North America or Europe uh, because of the uh, we'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, you need to keep all these different countries pleased, especially the ones who are funding you the most. So I just put mine in North America. Uh, the next thing you need to do is figure out what you're going to research. Uh, and again, the various places I looked suggested laser, laser weapons, laser pistols, and laser rifles first. Uh, those are the more advanced weapons. And here is the base. Now you can, later on you'll have more than one base, but you start off with just this one. And you need to go ahead and start building some things because it takes time for those buildings to be completed. Again, the sites I looked at suggested building an alien containment unit. So if you capture one of these guys, you can keep them alive and study them. And also uh, living quarters uh, for your people to live in. And it's also good to hire some more scientists and engineers uh, to make some stuff for you. You'll also want to equip your uh, ships. Now there's two different kinds of uh, ships here. Uh, one is the interceptor types that shoot down the saucers and the other type carries your troops and they go to the crash sites and land. Uh, so you'll need to make sure you've got soldiers for those and missiles and such for your other ships. Uh, at the start of the game you have pretty much all the basic stuff you'll need. Now if you want to capture some live aliens you may want to buy some stun rods. Uh, you got flares here in case you do a night operation. Um, you're probably better off not doing them at night. And what's cool is you can actually see from that globe there what's under the cover of darkness. And sometimes it's better just to wait for daylight and to go into these sites. 
Now here you see I'm buying some si more scientists. It'll take a while for them to get to my base. Uh, but that would allow me to do my research uh, more quickly. I'm also trying to hire a few more engineers. Once you or your scientists have learned how to make something, you need the engineers to produce it. So, I mean, <laughs> are you getting an idea of the complexity here already? I mean, so much to think about, even from the very beginning. Now, I skipped ahead a little bit. I've detected my first UFO. And luckily for me, that he's uh, already landed, so I don't have to intercept him. I'll show you that sequence a little bit later. Uh, but here is our first mission. We're going to touch down here. I just had to make a quick return trip to base for fresh underwear. But here we are. We're ready to go in. Now the first thing you do is decide what each of your soldiers is going to carry and also what they're going to have pre-equipped. And there's a lot of little subtle things that you must consider here. Uh, for instance, if you have a rifle, you need to have both hands free. Um, on the other hand, if it's dark, uh, you might want to go ahead and equip this electro flare so right away you can just throw it out there. Um, otherwise, it, you'll have to waste some of your action points, or uh, time units as they're called here, uh, equipping it. Everything costs a little bit of time to do. So that's always a factor, and it can be really devastating if you're right in front of an alien and you don't have any time units left to shoot him or run away. Now I've got this tank here, and what's really nice about the tanks is they can be your scouts. Uh, they can roam around and they have a lot better armor, so if the aliens can shoot them several times before they explode. And what's also nice is that they have rockets. And you can, all, all the terrain here, these fences, walls, everything can be destroyed, uh, manipulated, hidden behind. There's um, all sorts of uh, considerations uh, like that as well. The only downside is the tanks, unlike your soldiers, don't level up. Uh, they don't gain ranks or anything. So it's really better to save your kills for your actual soldiers. So skipping ahead a little bit here. This first battle was very easy. But even here, uh, my soldiers have no armor, so even one little hit and they go down, so I have to be very careful. Also, you notice I just threw that electro flare, so now I can see the alien, and that will allow me to get better, uh, better aim on them. So, I'm ready to fire now. The auto shot means you get, as you'll see, three attempts to kill it. Now there's also an aimed shot and a snap shot, and those take different amounts of your time units. Now it's easy to move so far that you don't have enough time units left over to fire. Uh, that's what those red buttons are for next to that green arrow there. Most of the sites I looked at suggested the auto shot as the best, but I had some, some luck with these other ones too. Sometimes you run out of time and the snapshot is your only option. Now you notice my guys are pretty horrible shots. As they level up, become uh, uh, sergeants and so on, uh, the aim will improve, and that makes it all the more important to keep certain people from dying. So you want to send in the rookies to the most dangerous spots. And, and plus, the only way they level up is if they actually kill an alien. So you might want to spread that out and make sure all your different guys get to kill at least one. You know, it's kind of a morbid undertone to that, isn't it? You know, as if this game wasn't complicated enough, uh, you also have to consider your angle of fire, uh, if you have a clear shot, sometimes there'll be a little wall or something obscuring you. But, you know, again, this this adds to the enjoyment of the game, to, you know, being able to think about all these things. It's usually better, if you're kneeling, you get a better, a better, uh, better accuracy, and you're a little harder to hit, but you also are limiting your line of sight. Now, you may have noticed how long this battle is taking, and I've skipped over some parts, but... I was, you know, it was taking me anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, uh, even for simple battles. Uh, one of the terror sites I went to later, I was still playing that after almost an hour. Now, this is definitely not a game for the ADHD generation. This is pretty far from Diablo here. But I realize I'm running out of time here, and I haven't even scratched the surface of this game. So I encourage you to check it out. Uh, there's lots of places you can buy this. Uh, Direct to Drive has it for $5, and of course there are many sequels to it. I didn't even have a chance to try those out. I was <laughs> a little too busy with this one, so if you've got a report on those, I'd love to hear it.
And that's all for this week's Match Chat. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I want to send a special thank you to Jace uh, from Jace's Faces. Made a really fun caricature video of me. Turned out a lot more flattering than it could have. Um, also want to encourage you to visit armchairarcade.com when you get a chance. A lot of great blogs and comments and forums. Fun things for you to do there. So check it out. It's all free. Thought I would leave you with a quotation. We cannot regard this planet as being fenced in, in a secure abiding place for man. For we can never anticipate the unseen good or evil that may come upon us suddenly from space. H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. Fantastic story, very scary story. Hope I'm still here next week. <laughs> See you guys then.